Hey, this is Adam O, and I am about to draw this stream right in your face. So, um, this is a commission that I got, uh, and I, I think it's from a campground that uh, a woman really likes, and she was wanting me to do a landscape for her, and as you can see in this, uh, on the bottom right, or the bottom left-hand section of my desk there, I've got a 4x6 photo, and that is the only reference that I have for this. That means that I had to infer detail, I had to make up detail um, in order for this to look decent. And so we ended up taking a lot of artistic license with this. Um, so right off the bat, I'm just going to start dropping in a sky and all I'm doing is taking a soft rag. I got a little bit of uh, extra soft charcoal on it and then I just wiped that all over the, the top there. And I left little sections of clouds but we're gonna kind of fix those and sharpen those up in just a bit um, the the main thing is I just wanted to get the the main the main sky base in so far uh, so I, we're gonna blow through a lot of this really quick because this is like 16 17 hours worth of drawing that we're gonna try to cram into about 30 40 minutes worth of video and so the first thing that I wanted to jump into is this is kind of a mid-range tree there there are several layers of trees in this drawing and I use a different technique for each of them because as we go further into the background, the trees are going to get less detailed. So this mid-range one, all I'm doing is I'm basically just kind of making little circles and dots. And then I go over those with a blending stump. Now I want to bounce to this background because I want to, um, I want to sharpen up these clouds real quick and all I do is I take a, a soft eraser what kind do I got let me look at this real quick it's a general's tri-tip eraser and this is one of those erasers that tends to erase right down to the paper uh, meaning it, it it erases really well it gets rid of most pencil marks whereas some don't don't do that that well with it so anyway I, I just turn that sideways and then I'm just um, scrubbing in cloud t tops and that's it you just erase away the charcoal you got on the paper sharpen up the tops and then they start to look like clouds now on the bottom part you don't really have to do that with the bottom typically with a lot of clouds the tops will be really sharp and bright and the bottoms will kind of fade into the rest of the sky um, you can you can sharpen them up and it'll look okay but I, I don't even remember what direction I went with this one um, but the the main point is I'm just you know erasing away the tops to make them sharper you're also gonna have to pardon the fact that I'm having trouble thinking of words and speaking today because I'm for the first time in like I don't know a 30 year smoking habit I finally decided to try to quit and I've this is like hour 35 without a cigarette in my head is not operating the way it's supposed to operate and so I'm having trouble thinking it sucks to speak I honestly don't want to make this video because I'm irritated <laughs> at just life in general anyway I, I'm not me complaining about my stupid smoking habit um, so I, I'm slowing it down here because I'm just throwing in a couple things um, just a few little kind of I call them peekaboo trunks. You don't draw out the entire trunk of a tree. You don't draw out all of the branches and then put leaves on it because we're not building a tree. We're seeing little parts of the tree trunk that, that show through clumps of leaves and whatnot. So I'm just drawing in just a couple little pieces of a tree trunk, a little a couple branches here and there, and then I'm going to draw leaves around those things. I just wanted to stop because I have seen people try to build a tree before where they draw the trunk, they draw the branches, then they try to put leaves on top of that. And it's, I'm not sure who taught them how to do that, but I've seen multiple people try it. So once I get the leaves put into place, I'm just lightly going to go over these uh, with a blending stump. And it doesn't matter whether this blending stump is clean or dirty. Um, me, if this is your first video of mine, when I say clean, I mean there's no charcoal on the blending stump already. When I say dirty, you can see on the left hand side I've got a big splotch of black on that scrap paper. That's extra soft charcoal. When I dirty up a blending stump, I just rub that 
blending stump in that big patch of extra soft charcoal and then use the blending stump like a pencil. This process that I'm doing right now, it doesn't really matter whether it's clean or dirty. The biggest thing is to just blend away the pencil marks, have little patches of these leaves that are light and little patches that are way darker to show a little bit of texture and a little bit of depth in here. We're going to start blowing through this again here in a minute um, because I just wanted to show you the basic way that I make these little mid-range uh, tree leaves. So this is actual speed that you see me drawing here. I've just drank a lot of coffee and I'm going to start drawing the furthest trees away from me. And that is the hills in the background. And all I did was just kind of scrub that in with hard charcoal, really, really light. And then I'm going to take a blending stump and blend every single last part of this together. It's okay if you blend outside the lines and you need to actually blend outside the lines on purpose. When I say blend outside the lines, I mean the top edge of that, that little tree line right there. If you blend a little further than that line, it will make those trees in the background look fuzzy. And it's the same thing with, um, you can see that I've left little white areas um, between the top line and the bottom line on there and I blended over that. That makes it look like fuzzy trees that are catching a little bit more light. So I'm just gonna continue that process all the way down. Um, I'm not stopping for this little bridge thing here because it's literally just a couple lines and that's it. So if you can't draw a couple lines, you're probably not going to be able to do any other part of this drawing. Um, so we're going to blow through the trees because, again, this is just the stuff we've already, you know, done. I'm going to start to finish out this a little bit, this, this mid-range tree. But we're also going to get right here into an overlapping branch. And this tree is a little closer to the, the camera. And so... To do this part, I'm going to need to start making the leaves uh, a little bit more focused. And we're going to start drawing the leaves a little bit um, more like one at a time. Um, it's not exactly one leaf at a time, but the, the leaves are going to be a little bit bigger, a little bit sharper, a little bit more detailed. And then every time we come, take a, every time we take a step closer to the camera, we're going to get uh, more and more detailed with these leaves. So I'm just going to start doing that across the trunk here and then I will end up taking a blending stump and lightly blending all that stuff together um, just to kind of take out the pencil marks but we're not really doing it to, to blend the whole mass. You can see right here all I'm doing is I'm, I'm blending in kind of small circles but I'm bouncing that blending stump all around this area uh, because I don't want to lose all the texture. And I also don't want to lose all of those little pinholes that happen between the leaves. So I'm just kind of doing circles and bouncing. So I'm going to bounce back to some of these other trees. And these trees kind of overlap each other and wind in and out. Slow down right here real quick because this is a, yet another layer that's a little bit closer to the camera. These leaves are going to be way more in focus than even the last one that we did. Um, to help me out here, uh, to help keep me on track and know where I'm at within the drawing compared to you know the reference photo, I'm kind of picking out the darkest parts of the shadows in this specific tree. And I'm doing that first. And then I can shape the lighter leaves around that. So I'm just kind of making this star kind of shaped um, shadow here and then I will start dropping in leaves all around that and then that that dark area will blend into the light area or it won't blend in it will transition into the light area then you'll see me do this all the way across this entire big bulky tree in this area there you can see me kind of pulling back up into the middle and doing the same thing with the shadows now one thing about this is when I'm done with this um, it's going to look two-dimensional. This tree that I'm working on now is going to look very similar to the tree behind it. And it's going to look um, like there's not a lot of depth to it. We're actually going to fix that later on in the drawing. As we get toward the end, we're going to start adding in uh, layers 
and the way that I do those layers is, is like the simplest trick in the world to do. And it will, I'll save that information. I won't spoil it for you. Um, cause then you'll, you'll find out and just turn on the video and scream in blind rage. And we don't want that to happen. So I'll show you in a little bit how I, I create that depth. I do want to slow down here to show you that all I'm doing on this specific tree is basically I'm drawing tiny little footballs, little football shapes. That's it. Um, and I'm drawing a lot of them. <laughs> I'll, I'll end up drawing several hundred by the time this is done. Uh, but again, that's a tree that's a, a, a little bit closer to the camera. And I think we only have one more tree that's closer than this. And it will again be even more detailed than what we have here. So by doing that, not only do we create the illusion of depth as if these trees are getting further and further away from us, we also break up the, the, the plane that happens. Like if we, if we didn't have different styles of leaves here and we didn't have different levels of detail, all this would, would blend and morph together into one giant blob and it wouldn't be worth doing the drawing at that point. It would just look like I spent many, many hours drawing scribbles. And, and so this helps us kind of separate out the, not only the different layers, but helps us separate out the actual individual trees themselves and gives the, the drawing a, a way better point of interest or more points of interest. I really want to smoke. Holy crap. Um, but I, I've gone, I'm going on three days shortly. And so they say that after the third day, um, that's like the peak of your withdrawal symptoms and man, my withdrawal symptoms are sucking today. So hopefully they're correct. Slow down a little bit. I'm doing another, uh, background layer. So on this one, I just literally scribbled in the leaves, just barely touching the pencil to the paper. And I don't use the point of the pencil. I rarely ever use a sharp, sharp pencil. I use the flat dull edge of a pencil and just kind of lightly scribble those in and then bounce around that uh, blending stump on there the way we talked about earlier. And it just makes the illusion of leaves. It fakes leaves and makes it look like it's way more detailed than it actually is. Again, we don't want to scrub it with the blending stump because we don't want to get rid of those pinholes and we don't want to get rid of the texture that the pencil uh, leaves. But we just bounce that around and it's kind of neat how it makes, you know, we can fake leaves. So back up into the tedious part again, I'm just going to start dropping in leaves and blending away the pencil marks and just continuing that over and over and over. This part over here is a, a, a mid-range kind of background tree, so I don't need to put as much effort into that. And so basically what I'm going to do is I want to pick out a couple clumps of leaves. And I'm going to put a lot of detail into those clumps. And then all the leaves around it, I'm going to start stripping detail away. And we will trick the person who's looking at this drawing into thinking that the entire drawing is detailed. Because their eyes go to the detailed leaves that we did put a lot into and then they infer their own detail on the rest of the drawing. It's, it's kind of like a psychological trip. Uh, well, trick, but also a trip. <laughs> um, just wrapping these up, um, it, it gets a little bit difficult to figure out what branches go to what trees, but if you're doing this right, um, you should be able to kind of fake your way through it and, and kind of step back and see where you think one giant clump would end and the, the background trees would begin. And you just kind of have to make decisions and use your own artistic license on when to strip detail and when to add it in. So here's that spoiler I was talking about earlier. All I've done is I've loaded up a Q-tip with a ton of extra soft charcoal. And all I'm doing is picking out some areas and blending that entire area in with a Q-tip. I don't worry about losing details because what we're doing is we're pushing those leaves, those specific clumps of leaves into the background and we're pushing them into shadow. So those are naturally going to lose detail as they go further into shadow and watch how these little clumps stop being one giant big ball of leaves and they start to have dimension and depth. You'll get some leaves that uh, are clumps that stick way out. 
others that fall back into the tree, and those are the ones that are in shadow. And at no point am I worried about stripping detail out of this by accident with the Q-tip. I'm just going over it like, like I don't care about the details at all, because I don't. Um, all we're doing is creating that illusion of depth and waves and rolls within those trees, and it's just way more realistic by doing that than leaving it like we had it. We're going to do the same thing even with the background trees. We can use a light touch with this because those are going to be a little bit more difficult to see fine details like, you know, uh, like the ones that we've got in the upper right. So we're going to blow through this entire left hand section because the trees here are done exactly like the trees on the right. So I'm just going to blow through this and just slap those suckers in. We will be slowing down in just a minute though. Uh, once we kind of wrap these trees up on that bottom right hand side, you can see me putting in the bottom shadows of this. This is the, the trees and the bushes that are hanging out over the stream itself. And so I'm going to start to drop in some shadows along this area and I'm using a, I think that's an extra soft charcoal pencil and I'm just dropping in as light as I can do it, little uh, horizontal lines. And I have made a mistake here, but I'm not too concerned about it because it's an easy fix. I've made the lines not perfectly horizontal, they're more at an angle. Since most of this area that I'm working on is going to end up being pitch black, or very close to pitch black, all I have to do is just scrub right over the top of those and fix the motion of those lines and make them more horizontal. Now, I'd love to say that there's a trick to this, but there's not really. Um, all I'm doing whenever I'm, I'm drawing those in is I'm drawing them in and also looking at the bottom part of my paper to make sure those two things are parallel, and that's it. So once I have those um, put in the way I want them and I'm happy with the motion, uh, then I'm going to go back with a blending stump and take out all the pencil marks just by scrubbing this and blending it all together. Now, as I'm doing this, I'm going to be picking up a ton of charcoal on the blending stump itself and it's going to basically turn that thing into its own pencil. So all I'm going to do is act like I'm a kindergartner with a coloring book. I'm just going to go back and forth and start pulling that charcoal to the right until it's an area that I'm satisfied to where I am like aesthetically I'm happy with where those shadows in. We're going to modify these like tons before this is done with but this is the beginnings of a bunch of shadows and also some ripples and stuff that happen underneath that little um, covered bridge that happen in the water. And we're doing all that with a blending stump. We're not doing it with a pencil because we don't want this to look drawn in and too sharp. Again, as this stream gets into the distance, we treat it the same way as we treated the trees. As it goes further into the distance, it loses detail. And so we want to keep with that theme in order to create the illusion of distance. As we pull that stream closer and closer to the camera, we'll start to see further and further into the water. When we get down to the bottom, I'd say about 10% of the paper, we'll be able to see through the stream and start to see rocks under the surface. All this stuff that's back here is just going to be kind of blended together and bunched up and um, you won't be able to see below the water surface. It's a little blurrier. It's not quite as sharp. It just becomes less detailed and creates the illusion that it's going back into the distance. So we're just going to keep doing that. I'm going to bounce back into the trees and finish all those up. Um, normally, I, you know, I'd just finish those up while I was there. 
but those get extremely tedious. One of the reasons that I, I jumped into the stream rather than finishing all the bushes and trees up at once is just it, it gets boring after a while and you have to jump to another area in order to keep your motivation going. Um, otherwise, it you can burn yourself out on a drawing pretty easily. So once I started on the stream and got that, you know, at least out of my system, then I could bounce back into the trees and spend, I don't even know how much time, a, a couple hours on that. Um, what you just saw was sped up quite a bit, obviously. But So I'm jumping back into the trees on the right because this is another tedious part, but it's the final layer, the closest layer of leaves um, that we've dealt with so far. And, and that actually, I say so far, but it's the closest layer of leaves that we'll deal with in the whole drawing. Um, so I'm taking my time, and I'm working on some of the shadows in the middle of this clump. And then I'm going to take my time and draw out each individual leaf. Uh, and this little section right over here will become a focal point for a lot of people. It won't become the main focal point, but it'll become a focal point. So I need to make sure that this is um, that that it looks good and it looks realistic because what will happen when we're all done is people from a distance will view this scene as a whole. As they get up on it, a focal point, um, the focal point, will be the one at the very bottom of the page, and you'll see what I mean whenever we get there. Then their eyes should be bouncing up from the stream into this area that I'm working on right now, and I. I kind of steer those eyeballs in that direction because um, I'm just used to drawing this way. I, I like to steer people's eyes around the page and I've just kind of learned how to do that over the years. Uh, one way that I'm doing it is to put a lot of detail into one section of the drawing and then sap away detail as we get away from that, as we go further into the distance, like we I mentioned a couple times before. Um, if I can keep people's eyes moving around the page like that, the drawing gathers more interest. If you ever find yourself looking at a painting and you're just looking at one spot the whole time, there's a pretty good chance you're going to get bored with it pretty quickly. So anyway, yeah, wrapping that up real quick. Actually, I, I'm mistaken. That's the second most detailed leaves. This one that I'm working on right here will end up being the, the most detailed leaves on this right hand section. But it's not that much more detailed than the leaves above it. And there you can see I've drawn each one individually and again it's 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 more detailed than the leaves above it but not that much more detailed. Um, it went by really quick, but one of the things I did there was after I was done, I took a kneaded eraser and pressed down on a couple of those areas that I wanted to be lighter than the rest, that I wanted to, to catch more sunlight, and it pulls off some pencil and creates the illusion that those leaves are catching a little bit more le or light than the rest. Um, I'm dropping in the rocks along the bank um, and then the rest of these bushes. We're going to slow down here in just a second because I'm going to start adding some detail to this stream. And I'm going to show you the different methods that I use to make this stream look uh, streamy, <laughs> I guess. All right, so the first thing I'm going to do, I'm taking a very loaded, very dirty blending stump. And this is one of my fat blending stumps. It's got a big, thick, fat head on it. And I'm just lightly going to start pulling out some really black um, extra soft charcoal. And I'm going to pull that out horizontally. But keep in mind that so th these black lines are some of it is shadow, some of it is reflection. And it's just kind of a darkening of the surface of the water that's created by, you know, shadows reflection by the water itself rippling over itself. Um, so these lines are not perfectly straight. They, you don't want them to be perfectly straight. You want them to be generally horizontal and you want them as a whole to create a line, a plain line that goes all the way across the stream, but they can curve. So you can see in the middle of the bottom one, I've got a little curve there and in the top one on the right hand side, it starts to curve down. 
when I get all these put together, that's going to look like the right hand side of the screen, the stream is rushing a little bit faster than the left hand side. And it causes a bend in the water that makes the reflections and the shadows and all that bend with it. So I want to jump down to this bottom part and I'm just quickly adding in the very first basic layer of shadows and reflections just to get them out of the way. And then I notice in, once I get those in that they're not quite dark enough. So I just went back with a Q-tip and some charcoal powder and darken those up. And I think I even go over it one or two more times to darken it even more than it is now. I want that to be really high contrast in that area. So what I've slowed down for here though, is I'm starting to put in uh, with a Tombow eraser, little reflections in the water. Uh, a couple of these uh, little areas that I'm doing are rocks that stick up out of the water and cause a little white foam and, and whatnot to appear. But I need to break up that black and so doing it with a Tombow eraser is the easiest, quickest way to do that. And you'll see me putting in little reflections and stuff up here too. Once I get these in, it doesn't matter if I go over each of these again with charcoal powder or a Q-tip. By doing that, if I darken this whole area, I am going to lose some brightness from these little things that I'm putting in there but it won't completely eliminate them. If I need to lighten those up again after darkening this area as a, as a whole, then yes, I can go back in and, and re-lighten those, uh, which I, I think I do at one point very, very soon. I'll jump up into this really large black area up here and do the same thing because that's that's a huge area of black that just takes up too much room without being broken up. So here I go with the uh, charcoal powder and if you don't have this you don't need to buy charcoal powder or use it. Um, you can do the same thing with a q-tip and the splotch of extra soft charcoal that I talked about earlier. Uh, you just dirty up the Q-tip and then just little bits at a time darken up that whole area. It just is a little bit faster doing it with a paintbrush and charcoal powder, I've found. It's also a little smoother. So I can make a single stroke across from left to right with the charcoal powder and a paintbrush, and it'll kind of Bob Ross it for me. It'll create these little micro um, motion lines that go from left to right which water naturally has whenever you're looking at it from this type of an angle. So this helps me kind of cheat the illusion of water. So I'm just going to continue pulling that over into the middle. The water almost always is going to be darker on the edges and brighter in the middle, um, at least in most pieces of artwork, because it creates the illusion of a, a light glare. So I keep that in mind while I'm, I'm doing that. I, I lighten up quite a bit as I get toward the middle. So now I'm going back up around this rock and I'm going to start adding in a little bit more of these shadows and reflections with a very light touch around that rock uh, with extra soft charcoal. And then I'm going to re-blend that again here in just a minute. A drawing like this is all about layers. If I tried to get this thing exactly right, right off the bat, the first time I drew it, um, it's just not going to happen. It's, I'm not going to be good enough to get that down perfectly uh, right off the bat. And if I'm doing this in layers, the corrections are so much easier to make. If I, I know that if it needs darkened, it's not going to take that much to darken it. I know if it needs lightened, it's not going to take that much to lighten it. And I can do it little bits at a time. And it's just a little bit better on my psyche <laughs> if I do it little bits at a time. This is my favorite part of the drawing, by the way. Um, I'm putting in the first reflections, the first detailed reflections of that little group of rocks up there. And all I have to do to put those in is just erase them in place with, uh, with a Tombow eraser. I keep the same shape as they are on the shore, just inverted. Then while I'm here, I'm just going to put little ripples and little uh, rocks and stuff 
that are breaking up that water. Because as we build this stream, we're going to add a bunch of those because the stream is very, very shallow. And so it's hitting a lot of rocks and it's really, it's not... It's not whitewater rapids by any means. It's it, by any means. Um, it's softer than that. It's a more gentle stream, but it does have little breaks and little tiny miniature waves, and just a ton of rocks that it's it's flowing over. So there's going to be a lot of areas where you get these little white bubbles coming up. That big rock on the left that I haven't finished yet has got a little spray of water that comes up off of it. Um, and I'll, I'll work on that a little bit more once I get the stream in place. So as I'm doing this section, uh, one of the things I'm keeping in mind is that I need to have sort of a ghost reflection of the bridge itself. It's not a detailed reflection. It's more like just a hint of darkness that happens right in the middle of the stream. And so I'm just making sure that I put that in there very soft, very blurry, right off the bat um, so that I don't forget about it. Now grabbing a blending stump, I'm going to very softly go back into what I've already kind of painted in place with the, uh, the dry charcoal powder. And I'm just uh, picking out spots here and there and making little dark horizontal slash marks pretty much. And those represent everything from breaks in the water to ripples to shadows to little rocks that are peeking out. There's so little detail in this section of the drawing, you don't need to know exactly what every stroke represents. You just need to know that you need a certain amount of them in order to break up that area and make it look more realistic. So I'm just going through with a blending stump using it just like a pencil, using a very light touch, and just kind of throwing in these little almost hyphen type of scratch marks in here. I'll pull out some of the uh, reflections, the dark reflections that happen on the left. I'll pull those out into the middle of the stream to help break that up a little bit and give it a little bit more motion. And we'll do that with a blending stump, and then we'll also do it at one point with a Tombow eraser. Then anything like individual rocks that poke out the top of this and actually break the water surface, we can do those with an actual pencil, because those will be in, in sharper detail. So let's blow through the rest of this. I'm just adding in some of the more prominent shadows and getting them out of the way. Uh, throwing in a little bit more charcoal powder. Um, there's, I'm finishing off four main rocks uh, that, that are real simple to do. All I've done is just one or two shadows that are super dark. The rest of it's mid-tone grays, and that's, that's all you do to it. You just leave it alone at that point. Uh, I'm not going to slow down for the bushes and the trees and stuff here. This is exactly what we've done before. Um, all this stuff is... is uh, just like we did the leaves and the rest of the trees, uh, a lot of this blackness back here that happens along the trail uh, is just coloring in big black splotches. I mean, if I have to slow down to show you how to do that, then this may not be the video for you. <laughs> now, I've left that little section uh, light on the right-hand side, and that represents a little trail that goes through the bottom there, which I think is another one of my... Uh, my favorite parts of the drawing is that little tiny detail there. It'll become more apparent once I get that in the rest of that section in place too. So let's slow back down again um, real quick. Uh, I'm putting in these little squiggly lines with a blending stump and that is to start to sharpen up that little covered bridge reflection and the little bush reflections that happen uh, the little shadows that happen under the rocks and stuff, they will have their own reflections. And so we don't have to draw those super detailed or even remotely detailed. All we have to do is just break the water's surface with that blending stump, uh, scrubbing horizontally and throwing in these little places where the water ripples. And those will naturally make reflections just by making those little you know, horizontal slash marks. Now I'm going back in with a Tombow, like I mentioned before. Um, I mentioned in every video, I'll do it again here. 
I should just get an Amazon affiliate link, uh, but but I've never set one of those up before, so I don't I don't know. Maybe one day. A Tombow eraser is a 2.33 millimeter eraser that operates like a mechanical pencil. Very thin, very sharp eraser, and you can use it to do all kinds of stuff from cleaning up rough edges to creating you know reflections like we're doing in this drawing. Uh, it doesn't have to be a Tombow. Mine is called a Tombow Mono Zero Eraser. doesn't have to be that brand. It just needs to be a sharp eraser. You can use a kneaded eraser to do the same thing. Um, it's just that a kneaded eraser is a lot softer and bends a lot more, and it's easier to lose its shape. Whereas, you know, the 2.3 millimeter erasers, I mean, it's, it's just like using a pencil. Um, all I did here was I'm throwing in the beginning rocks and I just put little dots on the paper and then I just erase a little highlight on top of those and that's it. It's instant rocks. No detail on that whatsoever. And I'm having to start breaking up the middle of this water with those rocks because there's a section where the, the creek almost goes dry. Uh, right in the middle of that and a bunch of little tiny rocks stick up out of the top But again, all, all I'm doing is a little slash mark a little curvy type of slash mark And then if I need a highlight on top of that, I just erase that in with the Tombow eraser If I do the slash mark and instead of using the Tombow I use a blending stump to darken the top of the rock It will give it the effect that the rock is underwater if you're erasing the top of the rock, it makes it look like it's above water. Because the ones above water are going to catch sunlight. The ones that are below water will bend and refract light, and they'll catch more shadow. And so they will appear darker than the ones on top. You'll see what I mean much clearer whenever we get to the bottom of this drawing, especially the bottom right-hand side of the drawing, because I'll be drawing a ton of rocks on that that right hand side that are all underwater. Grab a drink of tea so you suck it. For the record, hated this section of the drawing. Hated doing every bit of this. Uh, I don't know what it was. Uh, I. I didn't like doing those rocks, uh, the, the big ones that are above water. I didn't like starting the rocks that were below water. It was just, I don't know, tedious. But the thing is, once I was done with it, um, it made the whole drawing. It, 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 I really love how it turned out. I'm slowing down to show you how I did this section because once you see it all done and all finished up, it'll, it, it'll kind of blow your mind how different it looks now compared to how it will look and I'm taking a very sharp tipped blending stump and I'm just moving charcoal around on this uh, this side of the paper to make it look like there are shadows underwater and I'm making very elongated ovals uh, horizontal ovals these all represent the shadows of rocks that are just under the surface of the water and then pretty much once we're, we've got those in place, we can do whatever we want to the water's surface and not have to worry about what it's going to do to the shape of the rocks under the surface. Once they're there, they're there, I guess is what I'm trying to say. Now we're doing the same thing except just a little bit more detailed. Putting that, this is what I was talking about earlier where I put the dark shadow along the side and then instead of erasing the top of the rock I just smudge it in with the uh, the blending stump and it makes it look like those rocks are now underwater. As we get to the middle I lessen up the detail and this is not a distance thing this is a uh, light reflection thing so in the middle this the surface of this water is reflecting a lot more light than the sides. We've got kind of a glare there. So as we get to the middle of this stream, it's going to be more and more difficult to see the rocks under the surface. So I'm taking out detail as I get to the middle 
and then increasing detail as I go to the sides. And I pretty much do the entirety of the, the middle section with the blending stump. And now you can see as I've got that little rock in place, the above surface little boulder type rock, that's when I can start to work a little bit more on the details of the rocks that are under the surface as we go to the right side of this stream. And drop in the last of the reflections here in the middle with a Q-tip. Now all I'm doing is just creating little ripples that break up that glare. And, and all I did to, to create those is just use a blending stump and make little vertical, or I'm sorry, horizontal slash marks, but very, very lightly. Now I'm just putting in some highlights with a Tombow just to get them in place. And then now I'm going to start working my way to the right because I've only got just a tiny bit of the stream to do. And then we transition into doing rocks along the shore. Um, I'll explain the rocks now while I'm finishing up this stream, which this is my favorite part of the stream. Uh, but the rocks are done literally just by drawing rock shapes. And, and so where all the rocks meet along the shoreline, um, they're going to create a hard line shadow between each other because of the positioning of the sun in this particular scene. So almost every rock that you'll see me draw on here in just a second that's piled up along the shoreline looks like they're all outlined with dark charcoal. Um, when in reality, it's just all the, the shadows make it appear that way. So the good part about that, the beneficial part of that to me, is that I can just literally draw the rocks in like, uh, like they're cartoons. And then just blend in some you know, light gray areas, mid-tone gray areas to make them look more like rocks. Um, that's a good thing for me because if that didn't happen, if the sun was in a different position and the tops and sides of these rocks didn't have a hard shadow outline, then it means I've got to do every one of these rocks basically with a blending stump. And it would take hours upon hours upon hours to do these. Uh, fortunately, since it's not like that, these just took, I don't know, an hour or two at most to drop them all in. And to do that grass, all I did was just scrub it up and down with a pencil, then blend it all in with a, a Q-tip, then scrub it all in with a pencil again. I just did a couple layers of that and it was good to go. That's it. That's how you draw a big old stupid stream. I shouldn't call it stupid. It's one of my favorite... Uh, drawings just because I was able to pull that detail from my brain rather than from the uh, the reference photo. So I hope you liked this video. If you did, consider giving it a sub, my channel a sub, because those are the reason I'm doing this. Once I make so many subs, I can start making some money and do this for a living. It's not about greed. It's about using my skill set to make a career. So each one of those subs helps, and uh, so does the, the like button. Just give that a click if you would, and I will see you all on the next video.